Hey guys, welcome back. Kudos to you if you have survived the largest liquidation in history. That was wild. I was watching the markets drop in the morning and then I was completely exhausted. I took a nap, I woke up and the world was completely different. It was insane. I'm actually kind of happy that I missed that because I feel like in those crazy times you can make emotional decisions. Anyways, what I wanted to share with you is I want to talk about leverage because everybody's freaking out and everybody's stay away from leverage. And I think that, yes, I agree. And then there's a few things that I want to say about it. One is I want to make a difference between this kind of leverage. This is uh, per perpetuals and this here you can make a bet and then you can increase the leverage to that. And then your liquidation point becomes very close. So my first thing is this is a complete degen move, in my opinion. 99.9% .9 of the people that use these platforms are gambling and I'm all good with that. Just if you're gambling, don't be surprised that you lost. That's one thing. Now, the other kind of leverage that I want to talk about is borrowing and lending. And this, if you think about it, this is no different than what happens in real world. People leverage their assets to put that capital to work. That increases the velocity of money because you have one asset that instead of just being sitting down, allows you to have access to capital that then you can put to work and then increase your, the amount of assets that you own. And for me, this is how I see it. I have my Flare holdings and I'm winning on both sides of the trade because if the price goes down, I wanna be able to buy more. If the price goes up, I wanna be able to have more dollars. I, I, I'm winning on both sides of the trade. This, this is a work account that I have. So most of this money, I, I had to use it. And instead of selling this flare, I'm using it to work. This was above 2.5, 2.10 when we started. The health factor, as you can see, you have your total, like this position is $7,000. And then from that, I can borrow up to 71%. So almost $5,000. And I have borrowed a little bit over half of that limit. So what this means is that even at this point, it would still have to drop quite a bit more for me to even start getting liquidated. So this, in my opinion, this is a, a, just a mindset and a shift in how we see our assets because I can have my treasury back, which is this, and this one I'm happy to hold in the long term. And then I use this capital for different ways that make me more money so that I can buy more flair. Forget about the crazy APYs and, and returns. Just like if you could do this with a steady 10%, 15%, which it's not that crazy to do on DeFi. I'm going to show you an example. Then you can increase your holdings and then you just have to manage your debt. Uh, my rule, it's I never try to never go down below two. And usually what I do is I have some stables on the side. So like I said, this is a work account, but I have some stables that I, if, if this kept going down a little bit more, I could have access to those stables, deposit, repay my debt and keep my health above too. Like as long as you manage your risk, I don't see why this should not be it. And then of course you can decide. I wish, I wish like, to be honest, I wish that this account was above two right now, but like I said, this is for work. I need this capital and instead of selling my flare, I have to use this capital, like I have no other choice. Now in my personal account, I always keep it at two. And then as long as you manage that risk and then you keep it there, you should be fine. I, this account, even with that massive 30% account uh, crash, I'm still in a pretty good place. Like you get liquidated at one. So that means that there's still like another 50 or 60% drop before I start getting uh, the risk of getting liquidated. Now, what I do is that from my profits, I use that to either pay back my debt or to add to my collateral. And then if you can keep that and then you manage your health factor, that's fine. With CDPs, it's going to be a similar thing. I don't think that you should go 90% LTV on any asset because then any kind of movement would drop you down and liquidate you. You can do whatever you want with your assets. I just want to share this video because I want to tell you guys, don't be afraid because people, I, I know that they don't understand. And that's why they're just using leverage as like doing 500X as the same category as this. I don't think it is. And I do think that this is how traditional finance work. Right now, we're still in crazy volatile days in crypto, but that's also why there's a crazy amount of opportunity. That's my thought. And then lastly, 
uh, once we dropped, I opened an LP with FXRP and USDT zero. I realized that there was very little liquidity within this range. And this pool has been amazing. I mean, I started with $70. And if I go here, you can see that this is my fee projections. And this doesn't mean that this is going to last for a year, maybe. But I mean, if I were to be in this range for a couple of weeks, then I would more up than make the, the like in fees, I would make up any impermanent loss. And this X, this position, this is not with my own XRP. This is with some, I, I grabbed $70 that I took from leverage and then I put it to work. And this is giving me fees in XRP, in stable coins, and also in Flare. So I'm winning in every sense because I want to have more Flare, I want to have more XRP, and I want to have more stable coins. It's a win win. So just be smart about it. Don't ape in all at once. That's the other thing that I want to say. When you're using this, you have to do it slowly. I don't just go and go to Health Factor 1.10 all at once. Like some of this, maybe I use it to buy more crypto. And that is fine. Just don't do it all at once. All right, guys, rant over.